the last few years there has been a clear trend towards end-to-end -to -end reinforcement learning algorithms. That is, algorithms that learn both perception and control, starting from the QN, that showed the capability of reinforcement learning to learn directly from pixels. In this setting, the visual features are learned directly from the reward function. However, though it may seem the most intuitive and straightforward approach, it can be severely limiting. For example, tasks with very sparse rewards may waste a lot of information before a reward is seen. But all those steps in data could be used to learn visual features from the environment. Also, interleaving visual features directly from the reward signals means that it is completely interleaved with the task at hand. And when faced with a new task, not only the policy should adapt, but also the feature structure, slowing the process of adaptation. Today, we look at a new paper called Decoupling Representation Learning from Reinforcement Learning that proposes, as the title say, to decouple the learning part of the representation from that of the reinforcement. That is, there are two algorithms. One, the true unsupervised learning maps with an encoder the image to a smaller latent representation, and one that through reinforcement learning maps the latent representation to the action, learning a policy. In particular, this paper focuses on a new unsupervised learning task called Augmented Temporal Contrast, or ATC, which uses a contrasted loss to train a convolutional encoder to associate pairs of observations separated by a short-term difference, all under a simple image augmentation. There have been few other papers in this direction, but this is the first to show a competitive result when compared with end-to-end -end reinforcement learning algorithms. I'm Andrea and this is Bits of Deep Learning. If you like this video, remember to subscribe and share it. Okay, let's get started. As we saw, learning the policy end-to-end -end directly from the reward signal to the high-dimensional and continuous input space, like images, is a limiting factor. The most common approach is to introduce an auxiliary loss in addition to the reinforcement learning loss, to provide a feature learning signal even when the reward signal is absent. This feature learning signal may come from a self-supervised learning task. In the literature has been presented many different tasks from doing that, like depth prediction or pixel control, where the agent is trained to maximize the change in pixel of different regions of the input, or for example predicting a pseudo reward. However, these tasks are still entangled with the policy, as the objectives are optimized jointly. And so far these approaches didn't show good enough results. This paper investigates the idea of completely disentangling the learning part of the representation with that of the control policy, and thus learn an encoder that is agnostic to the reward. The pipeline introduced in the paper is this one. First, perform one step on the encoder using unsupervised learning, and independently perform one step on the control policy using reinforcement learning that can be optimized using whatever reinforcement learning you want. In the paper they tested SAC and PPO, two of the best reinforcement learning algorithms. See, the challenge of the unsupervised learning task is to learn all the image features that the control policy may need to solve the task but without knowing what this task is really about. So, to solve this challenge, they borrow a new paradigm from the field of computer vision. This new paradigm is a self-supervised method that has been shown to be capable of learning very good feature structure. In fact, it is able to learn powerful enough representation that only a linear classifier is needed on top of it, to perform very well on 
image classification data sets like ImageNet. This new learning paradigm is called contrastive learning. And the algorithm proposed in the paper is called Augmented Temporal Contrast or ATC and adapts the idea of contrastive learning to learn a powerful encoder for sequential decision making, like reinforcement learning tasks. The idea behind contrastive learning and ATC is to learn an encoder which brings near in the latent space embeddings of the same image which is applied at different augmentation technique but repels the embedding of different images. Thus you feed the encoder with the same image but with two different augmentation techniques and apply a contrastive loss that maximizes the agreement between the two embeddings obtained. In the same way, when feeding the encoder with two distinct images, the contrastive loss will minimize the agreement, and thus the embeddings will fall farther apart. This technique, that may seem quite dumb, has exceptional capabilities in learning properties and information of the image that are extremely valuable in vision tasks, for example like image classification and image captioning. Okay. So, going back to our paper, they adapt contrastive learning for reinforcement learning by exploiting the sequentiality of the observation in the environment. They do so by associating an observation with a near future timestamp, instead of the same image as commonly done in computer vision. And the observations are augmented with random shift. Also, they use a different encoder for the anchor observation, that is the current observation, and a positive observation, the observation at time t plus k. Specifically, for the second encoder, they use a momentum encoder, parametrized as a slowly moving average of the weights of the first encoder. Then, they use the info NCE loss on the latent images where the negative examples are the positive elements for the other anchors in the training batch. The authors of the paper did a thorough evaluation of ATC on three different reinforcement learning benchmarks, namely DM Control, DM Lab and Atari, where DM Control has continuous control robotic locomotion and manipulation tasks. DM Lab have complex 3D partial observable environments and Atari that have discrete control games. The evaluations are done versus end-to-end -end enforcement learning agents. In DM Control, they confronted a RAD SAC algorithm that is an augmented version of SAC, trained end-to-end -end from images to actions with their algorithm that has an online encoder trained by ATC and a fully detached reinforcement learning agent that operates on the latent images. In this confrontation, the end-to-end -end is called RL and the detached algorithm with ATC is called UL. The results are comparable, except for cart poles swing up sparse in which the role of the unsupervised learning algorithm has a substantial importance, highlighting the assumption that unsupervised learning performs better on sparse reward regimes. In DM Lab, as well as in Atari, they use PPO for the reinforcement learning algorithm, and on DM Lab, they experimented with two environments, Explore which task is to navigate ram randomly generated mazes, and laser tag, which requires fast reflexes to pursue enemies. You can see that in laser tag, the difference is substantial, probably because of the richness of the environment and the difficulty in reaching the reward. Also, they compare the two algorithms with an implementation which uses ATC as auxiliary loss called RL plus UL, which results similar to the unsupervised learning algorithm. Moreover, the UL pre and UL 2x 
are two implementations of the unsupervised learning algorithm that uses respectively pre-retrized sampling and two unsupervised updates for every reinforced update. On Atari, the results are very similar, though in Breakout and Space Invaders, the detached version of the algorithm perform poorly. Also, you can see that unsupervised learning used as an auxiliary loss achieve very good performances also in Breakout and Space Invaders. In this case, probably the unsupervised learning task alone is not able to learn some important feature for the environment, like for example the small ball or, or the fire. Another thing to note here is that they found that ATC plays an important role if used to initialize the encoder ways using 100,000 transitions. This training is colored in green. All these benchmarks we covered so far were to test the ATC algorithm trained online with the end-to-end -end reinforcement learning. Now let's see how ATC performs compared with other unsupervised learning approaches. To confront, they use an offline procedure based on pre-training the convolutional neural network encoder on data collected by the expert and then using reinforcement learning to learn the policy while keeping the encoder with weights frozen. They compare ATC against augmented contrast or AC via with time delay to the target observation and pixel control. We can see the supremacy of the ATC algorithm in both DM control, DM lab, and finally Atari. Interestingly enough, during the experimentation they found that using random shifts, also when the coder was frozen, speed up the convergence of the policy, meaning that the augmentation regularizes also the policy. However, to be able to only use latent images when training the policy, they cannot apply that augmentation directly on the images. So they introduced a new augmentation called sub pixel random shift, which linearly interpolates among neighboring pixels. This enabled for the improvement, especially on GM control. Though, personally, I was expecting a bigger role of the unsupervised learning component, especially on sparse reward environments and on the early phase of the training, the results are very, very promising. And the idea of disentangling the perception component from the control is compelling, especially in those environments in which the agent has to learn multiple tasks or where the reward is extremely sparse. That's all. If you like the content, share it and subscribe to the channel. See you on the next video. Bye.